I'm going to show you now how to solve a fishing rod question. So here we have a fishing rod with a three centimeter handle, a one to six gear ratio, and a spool diameter of four centimeters. So the picture you're looking at here, you've got a handle turning a gear. This gear has teeth that interlock with this one, and this gear is attached to a spool. So when the teeth on this gear, when this gear rotates, it causes this one to rotate, which causes the spool to turn to pull in the fishing line. And there's a two-part question here. How much tension, that's force, will result from 100 newtons being applied to the handle? And how fast will the lure move when you wind at 120 RPM? Okay, so what we have when you look at a fishing rod, you grab the handle and you apply a force to it. So we have the force on the handle. But that handle is really a lever with a fixed fulcrum. So what you're doing when you apply force to it is you're actually putting torque on the handle. So we're gonna go from force on the handle to torque on the handle. Now the handle, through a system of gears, is attached to the spool. Torque on the handle is going to put torque on the spool. And then when you have torque on the spool, because you're rotating it, you're pulling in the line, you're going to put force on the line. Okay, the force on the handle is 100 newtons. So we're applying a force of 100 newtons on the handle. How do we then find the torque on the handle? Remember, torque is equal to force times distance. The distance from where the force is applied to the fulcrum is the length of the handle. So I'm going to take that force and I'm going to multiply by 0 0.03 meters. 100 newtons times 0 0.03 meters is going to give me 3 newton meters of torque on the handle. How much torque will that put on the spool? Well, let's have a look at these gears. A fishing rod is set up so that the spool rotates faster than the handle because you want to be able to wind all of that line in quickly. That comes at a cost of a reduced torque on the spool. When we have 10 teeth being driven and 60 teeth doing the driving, our gear ratio is 10 teeth divided by 60. It is 1 over 6. So if I know the torque on the handle, I'll multiply by 1 over 6, and that's going to give me the torque on the spool. So the torque on that spool is 1 sixth of 3. It's 3 times 1 over 6, which is a half. That's 1 over 2. So if you take 3 newton meters, multiply it by 1 over 6, that's going to give you the torque on the spool. That's 1 over 2. Now how am I going to find the force on the line? My spool has a diameter of four centimeters. That means it has a radius of two centimeters. So the distance from the center to the edge of the spool is two centimeters. If torque is force times distance, then force is torque divided by distance. I'm gonna take the half Newton meter of torque on the spool, and I'm going to divide it by a distance of 0 0.02 meters and my one half divided by 0 0.02 gives us 25 newtons so what that means is if I apply 100 newtons of force to the handle that's going to put 3 newton meters of torque on the handle through the gear ratio, through the gear system, it'll put half a newton meter of torque on the spool. And then when you divide by the radius of the spool, 
that'll give you 25 newtons of force on the line, or 25 newtons of tension. Second question is just a little, a little bit tougher. That is, how fast will the lure move when you wind with 120 RPM? So on the handle, we have 120 RPM. That means that it's rotating 120 times every minute. What's that going to do to the spool? Well, again, if you look at our gears, we have 60 teeth driving 10. So we have a gear ratio of 1 over 6. 10 over 60 is 1 over 6. To get the output speed, you take the input speed and you divide by the gear ratio. You don't multiply, you divide. So I'm going to divide by 1 over 6. We divide by the gear ratio when we're dealing with speed. And so that means we have 120 divided by 1 over 6. And that gives us 720. So we have 720 RPM on the spool. Now, our spool, remember, has a diameter of 0 0.04 meters. Remember, the spool has a diameter of 4 centimeters. That means it has a circumference of 0 0.04 times pi. It has a circumference of 0 0.12 five, six meters. If you take the rotational speed in RPM and multiply by the circumference, you're going to get the linear speed. So the lure is going to travel at 720 revolutions per minute multiplied by 0.1256 meters per revolution. That's going to give me 90.432. Now, what does this number mean? What are the units of it? This is the linear speed of the lure in meters per minute. I know that's a strange unit. We don't typically use those. However, we always use revolutions per minute for a rotating speed. So your easiest bet here is to find the linear speed in meters per minute by multiplying by your circumference. It was the circumference I multiplied by. And then we're going to convert that to more reasonable units. If you're going 90 meters every minute and there are 60 minutes in an hour, just multiply by 60. And that gives you 5,425.92 meters per hour. Now again, meters per hour are not very well understood, but if you divide that by a thousand, that'll tell you how many kilometers you have. So to divide by a thousand, just move the decimal over three spots. This is 5.4 kilometers per hour. So if you turn the handle at 120 RPMs and you have a gear ratio of one over six, that spool is gonna go six times as fast as the handle. So 120 RPMs on the handle will put 720 RPMs on the spool. If you take the rotational speed of the spool and multiply by its circumference, that's going to give you the linear speed of the lure. The linear speed is going to come out in meters per minute. If you multiply by 60, that'll give you meters per hour, and then divide by 1,000, that's going to give you kilometers per hour. So at 120 RPM, that lure is going to move 5.4 kilometers per hour, or sort of like a, a fast walking speed, which is realistic for a fishing lure. If you're asked to solve a question like this in reverse, for example, if you were given the speed of the lure and you're trying to calculate the RPMs on the handle, just make sure that when you go backwards across these arrows, you do everything in reverse. So if you were given a speed, a linear speed, you would divide by the circumference to get the RPMs on the spool. And then, if you have the RPMs on the spool, 
you would multiply by the gear ratio, the opposite. You'd multiply instead of divide to get the RPMs on the handle. So however you go this way, just switch multiplying to division and dividing to multiply to go the other way, and you'll be able to answer these questions in either direction.